Uh, good morning. Uh, I'm Shubhabrata Barman. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering of the Institute of Technology. Today I'll be delivering a lecture on uh, uh, socket programming. So let's begin with uh, the lecture. So basically we know about uh, the client server model. So what is a client server model? So basically in uh, wave technologies, when we are accessing some web resource, uh, so the we are opening the browser and uh, we are typing some URL okay, on the browser. So what happens is that the web client actually sends a request uh, to the web server. So the web server fetches the resource and uh, uh, returns the uh, response to the client. So basically this is the client server uh, model. Uh, so, uh, so the client actually sends a request to the server and the server actually uh, sends a response to the client. And uh, this is how things work. Uh, so this is applicable in web technologies and uh, there are a lot of, lot of other uh, technologies uh, where this is the client server model is uh, applied. So, uh, in a network paradigm, we uh, try to understand uh, how this uh, thing works actually, it's how the client actually sends the request to the server and the server sends a response to the client and how the, and this actually uh, takes place over a network. Okay, so uh, say we are typing some uh, URL. Okay, say we are uh, accessing the the Google web page. So we are typing www.google.com. So on our web client, we are typing this URL. So what happens is that the web client actually sends a request. Okay, uh, it it resolves the uh, the DNS and uh, and uh, sends uh, after the resolution is done. By the DNS server, it uh, sends uh, the request to the web server, where from the web page is actually fetched. Okay, so so this it is fetched uh, by the client. So the resource comes to the client and uh, it is displayed on the browser client uh, browser. So now uh, how this uh, client actually uh, sends a response to the server uh, by creating a connection we have to understand. So this uh, client actually has an address. So the address, uh, what is this address? The address, it is the address of uh, the machine on which the client process is running. And we also uh, uh, deal with uh, the address of the machine on which the server process is running. So basically, the client process runs on a machine which is which has got an address. Now, how do we address a machine on the network? So, for addressing a machine on the network, uh, we have to uh, address the machine on the network by its IP address. Okay, so Internet Protocol address, and uh, the address of the process is the port address. Okay, so we we address the process by its port number. So the IP address along with the port address makes up a socket address. Okay, so now when the client actually sends a request to the server, the server uh, actually accepts the connection from the client. Now the client IP address and the port address is bound, okay, to this uh, machine or to the process which runs the uh, the the web browser okay so the uh, the client actually sends a request to the server fetching for the web resource now this is the the IP address the IP address so you can see this is the IP address and this is the port address okay so this is uh, the the IP addresses are uh, actually uh, IP addresses are basically uh, 32 bit or so this is for IPv4 IPv4 and uh, 
there are 128-bit addresses for uh, IPv6. Okay, so basically you can see that uh, this is the client socket uh, pair, uh, client socket address. Okay, the IP address along with the port address makes up the socket address. This, so this is the socket address for the client and this is the socket address for the server. Okay, so the uh, IP address for the server and this is the port address. Okay, for the server. Okay, now the server process actually say uh, there are certain well-known ports for some well-known application processes which are uh, which the server runs. Okay, so so this is the uh, port address for the server. So the IP address uh, uh, and the port address together forms the socket address. Okay, so for both the client and the server there is a connection socket pair. So th there is a connection socket pair. So you can see there is a connection socket pair between the client and the server and the client sends a request to the server okay uh, using the socket address which the server uh, to which the server actually uh, receives the connection and uh, it sends a response to the client okay so now there are certain we will talk about ports actually later so you can see the, uh, this is the port address 3479 is the port address which is allocated by the uh, the client okay so the client actually uh, the client host okay so operating system um, basically allocates uh, a port address okay to this uh, process Okay, and uh, here also the server host operating system actually allocates a port address. So this is the uh, this is the port address actually. So this is the port address, which is allocated by this host operating system. Okay, of the server. So uh, now, uh, if we uh, basically uh, we we try to understand. Uh, what is uh, a, a socket? Okay, so socket is basically uh, uh, if we if we uh, talk about sockets, socket is basically uh, it is uh, an application programming interface. Okay, so API application programming interface. Okay, which is actually provided by the operating system. Okay, by the host operating system, the host operating system to its uh, uh, network subsystem. Now, basically, what is a network subsystem? So, basically, we have to understand the uh, network protocol stack. So, this is the network protocol stack, protocol stack of the host operating system which runs the client process or the server process. So this is the uh, protocol stack. Now the protocol stack is actually a stack consisting of uh, uh, certain layers of protocols. Okay. Uh, so the layers uh, are uh, defined by, I mean, there are certain protocol standards. Right? Okay. So uh, the TCP IP uh, protocol standard protocol stack network protocol stack or the OSI ISO OSI protocol stack so if we uh, so in most of the I mean modern uh, network technologies we actually deal with the TCP IP protocol stack so basically the TCP IP protocol stack consists of the uh, five layers okay so here you can see the five layers of the protocol stack so Starting with the bottommost bottom, bottom layer of the protocol stack, we have the physical layer, then we have the data link layer, then we have the network layer or the internet layer, then we have the transport layer and the application layer on the top. Okay. So there are different protocols. You can see some of the protocols of the data link layer. Similarly, we have the protocols of the uh, uh, network layer. Okay. So these are the, the IP. Internet protocol and the OSPF 
open source path first and uh, the link state routing protocol. So the network layer actually deals with routing. So there are different issues of this uh, each of these layers. There are different uh, functionalities of each of these layers. Okay, and uh, each of these layers actually uh, offer a set of protocols which have different functionalities. Like the data link layer offers these protocols, like the CSMA. Okay, carrier sends multiple access and uh, the DDMA and FDMA. So these are these these are some of the multiplexing uh, schemes of the data link layer. Okay, and the physical layer actually uh, deals with modulation and encoding. So there are different uh, protocols and uh, different functionalities associated with each of the layers of the protocol stack. I'll talk about these. Uh, in details later on. Now the transport layer you can see uh, deals with uh, the TCP and the UDP protocols. Okay, so the TCP stands for the trans transmission control protocol and uh, the uh, user data ground protocol. So basically, uh, now the application layer, there are several application layer protocols. Some of the application layer protocols you can see over here. Uh, the HTTP and the FTP protocol or the XMPP. Okay, so so these are the protocols. Actually, these are application layer protocols. Now, coming to the network operating system. Okay, the network, the host operating system, which offers these protocols or the services for each of these layers. Now you can see if this is the operating system, this outer this box is the operating system. The operating system has two parts one is the the user space so this is the user space of the operating system and this this is the kernel space of the operating system okay now the protocol stack is embedded within the operating system so the protocol stack you can see the protocol stack the network protocol stack is totally embedded within the operating system okay and uh, the uh, application layer of the protocol stack uh, is uh, resides in the user space of the operating system, whereas the rest of the layers of the uh, protocol stack below the application layer resides in the kernel space of the operating system. Now, if we use the Linux host operating system, we can find the uh, the network module uh, in the uh, Linux operating system. Okay, so it can be uh, found uh, using this uh, path actually. Okay, so it, it, uh, the network module actually resides uh, under the root user. Uh, okay, so if we check this path, we can see the network module. That means the network module or the network protocol stack is totally embedded within the uh, operating system. Within the operating system, the I'm repeating again the application layer resides in the user space of the operating system and the uh, rest of the layers of the protocol st uh, stack resides in the kernel space of the operating system and this physical layer actually interfaces with the hardware so basically the physical layer has an interface with the hardware okay because the network hardware consists of the uh, the network interface card okay the network interface card which is the network hardware and uh, this network interface card actually uh, is the network hardware that uh, uh, interacts with the physical layer of the protocol stack okay now uh, basically what are sockets uh, to go by the definition of sockets so socket is basically a set of system calls okay so uh, this is the uh, client process and this is the server process okay so we'll un try to understand what is this uh, what is a socket so socket is basically you can see socket is basically a system call or a set of system calls so all these are system calls okay so so sockets are basically a set of system calls to get service from the 
uh, network protocol stack or the TCP IP protocol stack which is actually embedded in the operating system kernel. Okay, so uh, this is uh, uh, an interface. Basically, I have talked about sockets earlier. So, socket is basically an interface. So, it is an interface that the uh, operating system provides to its network subsystem. So, the operating system, so socket is basically, basically an interface that the operating system provides to its network subsystem. The operating system provides to the network subsystem. Okay, so basically you can see that uh, these are the system calls which are which runs on the client uh, on the client process and uh, these are the system calls which are running on the server process. Okay, and uh, so what happens is you can see uh, this is actually a device or a host. Okay, so say this is device A and this is device B, and you can see the. Uh, different uh, uh, protocols which are run. say we, this device A tries to connect to this device B. So what happens is that the application layer protocols actually uh, sends uh, request. Okay, so say this device A is the client and this device B is the server. Okay, so the client actually uh, sends a request, connection request to the server the server uh, sends a response. Okay, so this is the client server request response model. We have talked about it earlier. So what happens is that the uh, client application layer of the this the application layer of the host for this device A actually sends a request. Okay, now this request actually comes it it uh, this request actually comes from the application layer. Okay, down to the transport layer, down to the network layer, down to the data link layer, and this is the uh, physical medium. So this is the physical medium. Okay, so this is the physical medium of the media. Okay, this is the physical medium, the transmission medium through which the uh, transmission takes place. Okay, so the transmission takes place uh, to device B. Okay, and uh, so you can see the request comes to the to the server or this device, okay, and uh, this request actually goes up through the different layers of the protocol stack, and finally it reaches the uh, the application layer, okay, or the the application layer, okay. So now. We shall actually understand uh, sockets uh, clearly now. Say this particular device tries to connect to this, say device A tries to connect uh, to device B. So what happens is that the uh, application layer process actually, the application layer process actually sends uh, for this device A, sends a request to the uh, applic application layer process for uh, running on this device B. So how this uh, request comes, it, re it comes through the different network layers of the protocol stack, goes through the physical medium and then to the, to the device B, okay, through the different layers of the protocol stack. Now you can see, uh, so these are the, now, the IP layer of the network protocol stack deals with the addressing issue. Okay, so this is the IP address of this device A. So, the internet protocol layer uh, deals with uh, ne network addressing. So, it provides the network address to device A. And this is the network address for device B. 
and here you can see the transport layer protocols so TCP and UDP these are the transport layer protocols okay so the transport layer protocols actually provides the port addresses okay so these are the port addresses so 8081 is the port address for TCP protocol okay uh, and uh, you can see 8011 is the port address for the UDP protocol okay so uh, so these are the different uh, port addresses okay so uh, so now uh, the different uh, transport layer protocols like uh, the TCP and the UDP depends upon the different uh, application of where to use TCP and where to use UDP. So there is basically uh, an issue on this. So there are so depending upon the type of uh, transport layer protocols, uh, there are different types of sockets. So we have a TCP socket and a UDP socket. So TCP is basically a reliable connection oriented protocol and uh, UDP is basically an unreliable uh, connectionless protocol. So there is a trade off between uh, now uh, in network technologies, there is a trade off between performance and reliability. So some application requires fine grained performance while, whereas some application requires reliability. So applications uh, requiring fine grained performance are uh, multimedia applications say we are actually uh, uh, watching a streaming video okay on YouTube so those applications require uh, require fine grained performance while we are actually say transferring some files uh, on the uh, internet so those applications actually require reliability okay so transport layer supports two types of services one is a reliable service or a connection oriented service so reliable or connection oriented service and unreliable connection oriented connectionless. Okay. And this is actually connectionless service. Okay, so based on uh, the types of services provided by the transport layer, there are two types of sockets. Okay, there are two types of sockets. One is the TCP socket, TCP based socket known as the stream socket and the other is the UDP based socket okay, known as the datagram sockets. Okay, so TCP sockets actually uh, provide TCP as we, we know that TCP provides reliable connection oriented service. So TCP sockets are used in applications which require reliability and UDP sockets are uh, provide, since UDP provides uh, unreliable connection as service so UDP uh, sockets are used for applications which require fine grain performance like multimedia applications okay so we can see that uh, so uh, therefore these uh, services are used for uh, different applications okay so these services are used for different applications like uh, 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 applications, uh, multimedia applications requiring uh, fine grain performance, okay, and applications requiring reliability. Okay, now uh, as uh, we have understood that uh, the socket uh, is a set of sockets or set of system calls, okay, or application pro programming interface, API stands for application programming interface. Okay, so this is basically an interface which the operating system, the host operating system provides to its network subsystem. So this is actually, these are the uh, uh, system called prototypes. Okay, so this, this, this is the socket system called prototype and there are three pa parameters. Okay, uh, for this uh, socket system call, we have the domain, we will talk about all these things. Okay. So, so we have the domain, the type, okay, the type of uh, socket we are using and the protocol, okay. So this is the uh, prototype for the socket system call and then we have the uh, prototype for the byte system call, okay. So we have already uh, seen uh, how the system calls are executed, so on the client, on the client process as well as on the server process, okay. So first the uh, client socket is executed 
Okay. Uh, then uh, the uh, connect socket is uh, the connect system call is executed. So connect system call actually uh, creates a connection uh, with the server. So the client the client part actually executes the connect uh, system call, which sends a connection request to the server. The server actually accepts the connection from the client, and uh, after the connection is created, then the exchange of uh, data is it takes place between the client and the server. So the client actually sends a request, okay, a, a data request to the server, and the server actually uh, receives the data and sends an acknowledgement to the client. Okay, so the so you can see the send and the receive system call, which which are executed on the client and the server. Okay. And finally, after the data is exchanged between the client and the server, the connection is actually closed. Okay, so we'll, we'll talk about the coding part later on. We actually design a network peer-to-peer uh, -peer file sharing system. Say uh, an FTP server. Okay, an FTP server. So, the, so this is actually a, a peer host A. Okay, so you want to uh, say download a, a file actually. Say abc dot text from the server. Okay, so we can actually design a peer-to-peer -peer file sharing uh, system or a file sharing server. So these type of assignments we actually normally, or uh, we can actually design a uh, multi-threaded server or a concurrent server. Okay, so say this host is actually, this host A uh, sends a request to the uh, host B, this host uh, asking for the file, say a particular file, say ghi.pdf. Okay, so uh, and the host B actually sends this particular file to the host A. Okay, so you can see the the host A or the peer A sends a request to this host B and for this file and. So we can design a file information server or we can design a concurrent server a concurrent server so so there are two types of uh, file servers or two types of uh, servers that we can design one is the iterative server iterative server okay using the concept of sockets we can design an iterative server or a concurrent server okay so an iterative server uh, iterates with a single client. That means uh, it sends a client request to the server, and the server sends a response to the client. Okay, with the resource that the client asks for. Okay, so the so an iterative server iterates with a single uh, server. Okay, a single client iterates with a single server. So this is basically an iteration actually. You can see a, a, a client actually sends a request to the server uh, requesting for a particular resource or this file and the server actually sends a response. Okay, so this is basically an iterative. So it iterates, so this is iteration, okay. So this is iterates with a single, uh, a single client. This server actually iterates with a single, I mean, I mean this is an iterative process. It, it interacts with a single client. Now there are certain uh, servers which actually interacts with multiple clients. Okay, so those type of servers are known as concurrent servers. 
Okay, so you can see. No. Here you can see. Uh, so now these are basically all peers. Okay, so uh, this is uh, a system where you can see uh, all these are clients or these are peers actually. Okay, having the same status. Now. Here, this is what I was talking about. So this is a concurrent server, concurrent server. So here you can see there are this server actually iterates with multiple clients, okay, or uh, interacts with multiple clients, okay. So this is a concurrent server, okay, and. Uh, what we do is that we create multiple socket connections for these type of servers. Okay, so this is the parent uh, server process. It it forks actually. So fork is basically a system calling. It, it's a system call, and it it forks child processes. You can see a child server process. Now each of these server process actually uh, interacts with the client. Okay, or creates a connection with the client. So each, each of these uh, server process actually interacts with the client. Okay, so this is the um, this is how we extend uh, the server uh, socket connections for uh, we create multiple socket connections for a concurrent server. So there are multiple, I mean, there are various uh, things we can do, innovative things we can do. We can uh, design a component server, we can design a peer-to-peer -peer file system, file sharing system where we can, so here you can see these both are, uh, uh, these are peers actually. Okay, so, and they, they can share uh, the, the, the files among each other. Okay, so we can create socket connections. Okay, so you can create so socket connections between these systems. Okay, so we can, we can create uh, through a file information server. So there is a file server which can actually uh, share the files between these uh, peer hosts. So we can design those type of uh, systems actually. So that's all for uh, uh, today and uh, thank you.